Hello and welcome to Matt. A famous author once said that as many atoms are there in the air, there are perhaps as many stories. But the stories that I like most are the ones that can be told quite easily. And today I am going to be sharing with you some simple storytelling techniques. Today we shall be creating stories with typography, then discover another simple storytelling method, after which we shall have storytelling at the tips of our fingers with finger puppets, and finally a big story etched in sand. Only on MAD Make It Easy Special. Letters and words are part of our everyday life. If we combine these with art, then typography can be a lot of fun. Just like we had shown you in emotive typography, where we had written out words in such a way that the meaning came across much better. Today we shall take this technique a little further and along with the meaning of the words, we shall also try to define their shape and form. Would you like to know how? Then quickly watch this and come back. So I'll be showing you a new technique to write words, emotive typography. So come on, give me a word. Uh, splash. So Abhas, the word you gave me was splash, right? Yeah. The word splash brings to mind water, right? So we have written out the word splash to look like water. And I've also drawn tiny little droplets of water which we get when water splashes all over the place. This adds the little detail to make it look more like water. And if you like, you can fill it in with color to make it look even better. You must remember that the color you choose should try and match the word and the character of the alphabets you have spelt out. For instance, since we are trying to depict water with our alphabets, we have used the color blue. What do you think? It looks great, Rob. Just by looking at the word, we get the meaning as well. So, shall we try another word now? Crash. What comes to mind when you hear the word crash? Accident. Okay. Palak, you said when you hear the word crash, an accident comes to mind. Which is why I'm drawing some broken edges as if there has just been an accident. And these tiny little fragments are broken and are... Flying off. Flying off. And to create a sense of speed, we shall draw some lines running across like this. For which we are using crayons. And to add in some detail, I'm creating a bit of a shadow on the edge so that it gets a 3D effect. Oh! We fill in some color here as well. Okay, let's get started. The words that I just depicted with emotive typography are actually action words. And the form is pretty free-flowing and random as well. Now we shall take some words that have a more definite form, more well-defined. For example, I have got here with me the image of a shark. Now if I would like to write the word shark, then I must keep in mind the form and shape of the shark. For instance, I have the outline of a shark before me. We have kept the basic shape in mind. So first of all, let's see how we can fit the letter S in. Now if you notice the shape of the mouth of the shark, it seems to match the shape of the letter S quite well. Something like this. Now we have got to fit in the letter H. So let's see how we can match it with this part of the shark's body. We've got S and H, the next alphabet is A. Now all we have left is R and K. The shape of K is almost like the shape of a tail fin. So let's write in the K first. As you will see, just by adding one line here, we've got the form of the letter K. Now all we have to do is fit in the R in this part. We can erase all the other lines. So that all we can see is our form. Okay, so this is now complete. Now let's color it. Yeah. 
Okay, it's now ready and you can see how great it looks. And just by spelling out the word, we have managed to get the shape and form of the shark. So not only we have given it meaning, shape and form, but we have also given it a new life. Now let's give it a finishing touch. So this is how you can add life to your words and can also make interesting stories. So while you guys think about some stories, we shall take a short break. But don't go anywhere because after the break I shall be giving you a simple storytelling technique using storyboards. We shall make some fun and easy finger puppets and after that a big sandy big picture. Welcome back to Mad Make It Easy Special. You might be aware that most films begin with a storyboard. The idea of the storyboard is to place the story on a panel and give it a visual form. This is usually quite complicated. But on Mad, we make it easy for you. We had shown you how to create a simple storyboard with changing characters. And today I am going to show you how you can change the background as well to make your stories even more interesting. But before that, let's see simple storyboards. I'm going to show you a simple and easy technique to make storybooks. Hmm? Would you like to see how? Yes. I've got some color chart paper here with me. We take one color and fold the paper like this. And the reason why I have folded it is so that with just one cut, I get so many pieces at a time. And this will form the body of our character and we use the same technique to make the head. We make the body a little more interesting. Just like we have made his t-shirt with another similar paper cut out, if we curve it a little bit at the ends, that will give us the hands. Now what is missing here? Legs. The legs, that's right. See, we've got the legs as well. Since we need to make the sky in the background, first let's take our blue chart paper. We've got three frames in front of us. Now I take some green color chart paper and cut out the shape of grass. So we have our grass in place. Now we take a bit of brown and use it to make the road. I've cut out some clouds and what comes next? Our character. character. That's right. And so we have our first frame. And here we shall place our second character towards whom the first one was walking. And here we have his bicycle. I've cut out a whole bunch of red balloons. He's a balloon seller. Yeah, a balloon seller. And now since we have some more cutouts of the character, we shall place them in as well. Now let's highlight the balloons a bit. Okay? Just like I had cut out a bunch of balloons, I had also cut out a few individual balloons. So let's stick them on. Now taking a marker, I draw in the eyes and a smiling mouth. The balloons are all tied to the bicycle here. Our character is happy to see the balloons and his smile gets even bigger. I have made another frame here in which he is flying away with the balloons. And if he is flying away then where will he go? Into the sky. Into the sky. Which is why I have created yet another frame in which he is flying off into the sky. But in front it's of him. It's a bird that is about to burst the balloons. That's right. And so we have another frame in which the balloons have burst. burst. Pa! So what happens next? Now he will come down. He's going to fall down. So his expressions where he was smiling before has now changed to sad. 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 Okay, so using the same technique as before, I have cut out the various objects from different colored chart paper. For instance, here we have the background on which we have the sun. Then we add on the next layer which forms the grasslands or meadow. Next comes another layer for the foreground. Next I'll show you how to place the characters in the picture. So in our story, our main character is a farmer, his cow, a few more objects in the background, another small tree, we place that in as well. Then in the far distance we can show the farmer's little house. And to make the sky look a little more interesting, we can put in some clouds. 
So you can see our frame is complete. Now I shall show you that by merely changing the background, we can add some drama to the scene. I have kept all the elements the same, but only change the color of the sky. The sun has disappeared from the corner here and instead of the blue sky, we now have a gray sky. Now because we have shown a gray sky, if we add just one more little cutout to it of a tornado, the tornado is moving inwards and sucking up the trees into it. Just like this, I have made quite a few frames here to create a story. So I'll show you how by making a few changes in the background, how we make changes in the story. So let's begin. It was a bright sunny day and our farmer had set out to work on his farm. When suddenly something happened to the sky and the sun disappeared. And then he saw a tornado appear very slowly in the distance. The tornado came up to his cow and sucked the cow into its depths. After which the tornado picked up speed even more and moved towards his house. An angel was sitting up in the clouds and the angel saw that the farmer was not happy at all. So the angel reached out his hand and immediately transported the man into his home. But when the farmer looked out of the window, he realized that he had actually been transported into outer space. And in the distance, he saw his cow floating in space as well. Wasn't that really simple? Now you guys think up different stories and think what you can do with the characters and the backgrounds. Have some fun. Welcome back to MAD. Make it easy special. What's cooking today? Stories with you guys. Really? That's so much fun. Friends, do you remember we had made finger puppets and some very interesting stories with them? I want to see them again. I want to see them again. Relax, relax. All right, let's see how we can make finger puppets. Now I'll show you. Come on, guys. I'll leave you. Uh. Hey, guys. What are you guys doing? Thumb wrestling. Listen, guys, you know what? We can make this more interesting. How? You were just playing with your thumbs, right? Now imagine if we were to turn these thumbs into characters. You can have your own character and you too can design your own character. Sounds good? Okay, cool. Okay then, first of all, I'll take this box board and cut out a little strip from it. You should measure the height according to the length of your finger. Over this, we fix a layer of sponge. We have cut it according to the shape of the strip. So now by attaching the layer of foam, we get a little bit of thickness. Now you roll it around your finger to give it a nice cylindrical shape and then stick it together. So your cylindrical tube is ready. Now we design it according to the character we want. I've got a bit of fabric here with me. This material is quite thick and we are going to cut some shapes out of it. Okay, so now I've cut a shape out of it. Let's wrap it around our cylinder. Below that, I'll add a belt. Now we have got the body. Next, we'll make the arms. We take another piece of box board. We measure the size and according to that, we draw the shape of the arms. We cut them out. Okay, so now we've got the arms cut out. I'll use my fabric again for the sleeves. To stick on the fabric, I'm using fabric glue. I cut it neatly. And there we've got the arms. We can add on some accessories as well. We are going to make a hat for our character. We've cut two identical pieces so that we can glue them together like this and they can fit easily around your finger. I've glued the two pieces to the sides with a thimble in the middle and I've glued on a third strip at the top so we get a nice 3D effect. That's ready. And now take the pieces of our character's body and glue them on neatly to the cylinder. I've got a toothpick here with me that I've dipped in silver paint and I've cut out a little ring from the box board and attached it to one end so it looks like a sword. We attach it to the belt like this for which I'm using some black thread. Now for the hat we have a little skull. So now our pirate is nearly ready. To draw in the face I use a permanent marker. Then using a correction pen I draw in the teeth. Pirates always have a large moustache and of course, we cannot forget the eye patch. <laughs> Captain Bones is happy. Everyone laugh with me. <laughs> <laughs> you just saw how we can make finger puppets. 
Now we shall learn another technique with which they can be more fun. I've got here with me some pieces of cartridge sheet which I wrap around my finger to measure it like this. So on one side we give him a normal ordinary look where he is dressed in a sweater and when we turn him around to the other side he is dressed in a costume. Uh, I'm using this shade for his sweater. We measure it like this up to this half line. We cut it out with a round tip safety scissors. Okay, so now we've got a piece that we can use for the sweater. It fits in here quite nicely. And for the costume, we shall use this shade of purple. You've got to glue them on neatly edge to edge. Okay, so now I've drawn out a bit of a pattern for a sweater. It's a V-neck with some stripes and that too can be cut out from the paper. Okay, we've got our sweater nice and ready. Let's get to work on the other costume. Now if you like, you can add in some more detail to the costumes. Okay, so now we've got our puppet's costume ready. And in the same way, you can make the head too, just like I've done here. I'll show you. Now, let's place it and see what our finger puppet looks like in the end. Here, we've got the ordinary guy costume and his ordinary look. But when in need, ta -da -da, ta -da 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 -da. he turns into a superhero. So now you know how to use a very simple technique to make finger puppets. <laughs> No matter what form you use to tell a story, it's always a lot of fun. And you can put in your very own ideas to make it a lot more interesting. So go ahead and practice while we take a short break. And after the break, we shall see how every grain of sand has a story to tell. There are so many things in nature and each has a story behind it. Even a grain of sand has millions of stories to tell. And using this quality of sand, we shall be making a big picture which will tell you a visual story. So watch this. So our light table is ready and the acrylic top and the lights inside. And in this bowl here we have got some sand. And now I'm going to show you some magic. So lights off.
This looks nice. Hey, this looks like somebody. Pretty handsome, huh?